This is a HP 620 laptop, out of the trash as always, and uh, this is a machine which has uh, been scrapped purely for its age, uh, because this is a very low-end machine from about 2010, so at the time of shooting it's uh, just about to turn 7 years old. And uh, this particular one was a very low-end machine to begin with, being shipped with a Celeron T3000 uh, 1.8 GHz uh, 4 to 5 nanometer core 2 duo based Celeron. I think it's a dual core, but uh, that's about the only fancy thing about it. Uh, it works perfectly, but uh, it is dog slow. The CPU gets uh, about 1000 points in uh, a pass mark CPU mark, so yeah. It's, it's basically too slow for any normal use. Uh, to give you a bit of reference, uh, a basic mobile i5 these days gets like almost 4,000, uh, but I do happen to have a whole bunch of parts for laptops of this age. So I think it would have a bit of a dig around in my stores and would replace that Celeron T3000 with something a bit more high-end because I believe that's a socket P processor and uh, for, for whatever reason I've come across a lot of uh, just scrapped, broken down uh, socket P laptop, so uh, we could end up with a reasonably powerful thing in there. So let's have a look. So what do we have? Xeon E5405, that's not going to do. That's a Pentium 3. That's, uh, yeah, LGA stuff. But now we're getting into it just for random. Laptop processor socket, hey, that's not going to do, random old stuff. AMD, Pentium 3, wireless card, that doesn't belong there. More random old stuff, 3G modems. Wow, why do I have so many wireless cards? These are not supposed to be in this box. Now that's a little... Novelty, uh, that's one of those, ah, uh, what were they called? Like Intel, Intel something of the other, it's like a really tiny SSD, which you, it's like supposed to take a little piece of your OS or something on it. These were really mm, a giant flop, and this is the only one I've ever seen. But yeah, this is a tiny SSD, which you can't use as an actual SSD. So, that's to modern P6100. No, we're getting somewhere. No, T74, 7250, that's too old. That's a Pentium 4. Oh, so much LGA stuff. Oh, <laughs> that's a deleted Pentium 4, I think. Uh, Solaron 575, that's way old. 667 FSB. And this is something more modern. This is T7200, too old. Uh, 533, yeah, that's another socket M, another 533. Where are my socket P's? T2390, socket M. T5600, socket M, what on earth? And. 667, so that's a T5500, what? Where have all my socket P processors gone? Oh well, not to fear, for the shit pile is here. It's hot have has an abundance of AMD stuff in this pile. It's a bit ridiculous, really. AMD, way too old. Sold it in, oh, this is just trash. Pentium M, AMD, I don't know what might be getting somewhere. Core 2 Duo P7450, I've got no idea. 7000 series tends to be slow, but this is a 1066 FSB. I'll give it a look. Nope. I think this one's a socket P as well. It's got a broken fan controller, so it's quite useless. Yeah, we'll have a look at this. Ah, yes. Now we're talking. This thing is a socket P, and I remember putting a distinctly powerful processor in this thing because this used to be my main bench PC back in the day. So I think this has a strong dual core or perhaps even a quad core in it. 
<laughs> despite its rather dreadful looks. So let's have a look inside. I think it's stripped of almost everything else. Ah, oh, process is gone. Well, colour me bloody well surprised because I had to dig through the entire shit heap and the only thing I could come up with was uh, it didn't require disassembling a machine completely in order to rip it out was this uh, T4300 which is like 25-ish percent faster than what's already in here. And I'm just astounded because I know I've had several higher end like P9300 series processors in this pile, but they just seem to be nowhere to be found. So, I don't know, I'll just slap this thing in there. It's a bit faster, it'll make a difference. But I don't know where the hell all my fast socket P processors have gone. I, I am sincerely flabbergasted because I don't own any socket P laptops except for this one. Not in working order anyway. Oh well, apart she comes. Oh yeah, this thing's seen a few hours. Yuck. There we go. I'm just gonna clean the crap out of this stuff before putting it back together. Whoa, hold on to your hat. I found a T4400 in this big dead Acer. So we can gain 100 megahertz out of that. And it'll do a whole lot more good than sitting in this thing with a busted motherboard. I don't remember if I actually made any effort repairing this particular machine. I don't think so, since it's still got all its RAM mounted. But it's got a GPU, so chances are the GPU is just dead. Or the GPU has died and taken all the support circuit with it. I don't really care. These ACs aren't really the height of build quality anyway. They're not really worth repairing for the most part. Although that is a fancy heatsink. Can save that. And there's the gold T4400. Such a big heatsink for such a puny processor. Although we probably have a relatively fancy GPU there. Here's that. Has that been thermal pasted? I think, and look at that. Pretty sure this has been thermal pasted. Yuck. So that means it's been owned by someone concerned with performance and doing their own maintenance. This is conductive though. Yep. Very slightly. Yep, that is conductive thermal paste, alright. The dye itself is not conductive. That might be part of a problem. Although it doesn't look too splattered around it. Well, I don't care. This thing's crap. It's going to a big laptop heaven. I've got 4 gigabytes of RAM out of it. Useful CPU. Get out of uh, Wi Fi. There we go. Oh, I hope that this processor has actually survived. Since uh, that thermal paste doesn't look to be very evenly applied. Oh, I guess we'll see. It's probably fine. I don't think I've ever seen an entirely dead modern Intel CPU. The worst I've seen in recent years is uh, a little core i3 uh, out of a laptop, which uh, one of the cores doesn't work. But uh, I just disabled that core in the BIOS and uh, the laptop worked fine as a single core machine. That still performs just fine. You can watch YouTube videos on this, no problems. It's been running since like 2012. Blobbed it. There we go. Clean the last dust out of there. No need for compressed air. Uh, where the hell did I put that RAM? I have a habit of always, 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 every single time putting some isopropyl alcohol on uh, the RAM sticks as I put them in. Because in my experience, 
bad RAM sticks aren't really a common problem anymore. Not in modern computers, but uh, uh, badly connected RAM sticks are an entirely different deal. Because you just don't get very good contact pressure in these sockets since, well, if you did, you'd be using 10 kilograms of force to push the uh, modules in due to the high pin count, but uh, I think we should power on now. We don't have a hard drive, but uh, we can just steal the one I used in the last laptop repair, since that should work in this one as well. Yeah, this, this machine uses one of those silly tiny, tiny DC plugs. There we go. Memory size change, that's good, it should be double. And we've got uh, Pentium DC, T4400, 2.2 gigahertz, 4 gigabytes of RAM. Everything in order. Lovely. So, all that's left to do is clean this machine out, uh, get an OS on it, and it'll be good to go. Uh, laptop screen's cleaning, I'll just use normal IX brand uh, ammonia based window cleaner. Nothing special. Nothing special at all. Some people will tell you not to use ammonia based things. I've been doing this for a better part of a decade and never had a single issue. Here's something I wanted to try for a while. Can you use an electric toothbrush to get, really get into that corner there? Let's see. And the answer is yes. And what about dirty, disgusting keyboards? I would say that work is damn fine considering I didn't even use an insolvent. That means it's done. Oh wow. Just look at the colour of that. That worked way, way, way better than I did expect. Oh wow. Just look at how clean those keys are. Even though they're these weird HP keys with a little ridge there, which you usually can never clean, they're clean all the way into the ridge. The only dirt that's left is uh, pretty much uh, little strands of hair which gets tangled in the scissors, which you... Well, you can't get those out without disassembling everything. Well, that's just insane. Powered toothbrush. The way to go for cleaning laptop keyboards. And the final ingredient. Junk bin 5400 RPM drive, complete with a HP sticker and all. And I was going to run Passmark's performance test on this thing in order to see just how fast it runs. But since this is Windows 7, uh, we have a something doing this on a fresh install. Thank you, Microsoft, and thank you for watching. Cheerio.